Want to make cinematic shots in Unreal Engine like a pro? Unreal Engine isn't just for video games. It's also a powerful tool for cinematics and storytelling. In this video, I'll walk you through the basics of using the sequencers to create a dynamic shot with both cameras and a character movement. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a tutorial on Unreal Engine and how to build your dream career in the gaming industry. And don't forget to visit Woolen.com to learn more about the Game Creator Accelerator, a lifetime mentorship program where I will help you build a successful career in video games. From mastering technical skills to growing your fan base and standing out to studios and recruiters, you'll get the structure, strategy, and personal guidance you need. We'll create a customized plan together and I'll be there to help you adapt and grow every step of the way. Do not waste more time without a clear plan to reach your goals. Now, let's get started. For this demo, I'm going to use the Unreal 5.4.4, but you can also use previous versions of Unreal 5 and 5.5 as well. Select Games, Third Person, and let's call this one T Sequencer. Once the project created, let's add a new level and select this basic and create. Let's add also a folder called game. I usually create this folder to add all the assets and subfolders that I will control in, in my projects and one for maps so I can save my current map. I will add first a mannequin to have a relation of the space that this scene is going to take. So go to content, characters, mannequins, and we have uh, meshes. Let me add a mannequin around here. Yeah, this is where the player is located. And I'm going to add a mannequin here. And let me add another one on a side. And probably I'm going to rotate it. The goal is to create a simple scene where we're going to move the camera. Go to Place Actors and pick the option of Shapes. And let's add a couple of cubes. I'm going to change their size a little bit. And now let's create another copy with Alt and Drag. Maybe rotate it a little bit. And one more. Let me place it in a space like this one. And let me add another one just to place in the middle. That's, that looks good. And another one, let's say, in a place like this one. It doesn't matter very much. What I want is to add some elements for the scene. If you don't have the sequencers option or windows here, you can also go to Windows, Cinematics, and Sequencer and then you can add it here on the bottom. The next step is to add a camera actor. Go to Place Actor, look for the option of Cinematic, and select a Cine Camera Actor. And you can place it anywhere on your scene. A small square will be prompted to one side to present you what is the section that this camera is taking. Go to the object and move it until you have exactly the shot that you want. Another option is taking control of the camera, like if it will be a drone, and set the camera in the positions that you want. For that, you go here on the perspective view, and instead of selecting that one, pick the cinema, the cine camera actor. Now, if I move the mouse, I am moving the camera in the direction that I want, to the position that I want. Let's say that I, I wish to start with this take on this position. Once I finish, click here. And if you move now around, you will see that the camera is placed in the place that you want it. Now let's add a sequencer. First, go to the content browser, go to game and create a new folder that I will call sequencers. Then Click on this button that looks like a cinema icon and select Add Level Sequence. 
A good notation to give a name to a sequencer is starting with LS for level sequencer and then the name of a shot. Let's say shot 001 and save. At the bottom in the sequencers, you can see the LS shot 001 that we created. Now we can add elements for this sequence. The first actor I want to control with the sequencer is the camera. So select the camera. You can pick it here on the viewport or you can pick it here in the outliner. And then from the outliner, drag the camera inside the sequencers in this section to the left. In the viewport, you will be presented with the shot of the position for the camera at this moment. First, I'm going to change the 30 FPS to 24, which is the usual film. And now I will start creating keyframes for this shot. To start, I wish to keep the position of the camera as it is at this moment. So because I have selected the camera in the sequencer, I can pick the transform and then click here on the plus to create a new key. As you can see, we have a red uh, bottom, a red circle here indicating that we created that first frame. Now I can move in time and as you can see, the camera is not moving. But now I can translate my camera and changing the position, let's say something like this. In fact, I'm going to control the speed just a little bit to be more precise to a position like this one. And now, because I want to create another key for this sequence, I click on the plus. If you drag this section, you can see that the camera is moving with the sequence. Now let's move even a bit further. And again, I wish to move the camera now to another position. Let's say this one. Because I want to add another key here, click on the plus. And now let me move even further to another position for the camera. Let's say this one a bit more on the back. Add another key. And then even further, let's say here. Oh, I didn't move the time, so I have to move it first and then add the final transform key. Click here. Now you can see the entire sequence of the camera moving around your scene. If you use the space bar, you can also see the sequence. As will be animated if you, if you will be watching this as a movie. You can also extend the duration of the take of the shot by moving this section and of course the corresponding to the camera. And because you want to still control in the camera, you can also move this one. The other cool thing is that the keys can be moved to a specific point in terms of time to whatever you want in this sequence. So let's say I want to move this uh, almost last uh, final key to a bit more to the end. And now you can see another sequence that will take different type between these keys. Also, you can see that the movement of the camera starts slowly that increase the speed and then slow back until reach and reaching the next key. You can also control that movement clicking here. Let's open this window a little bit more and check the transform. Inside the transform, you have the location, the rotation and the scale. In our case, we're just working with the location and the rotation. And you can control the different keys. You can see here the keys in time and say, well, I want something maybe uh, more drastic at this point or whatever you want to design it, depending on Oh, on the taste for uh, the shot that you are creating. So here you can make more subtle adjustments. And of course, on the top, you also have options to, let's say that you don't want a soft transformation between one point and, or, and another, but you want a sudden uh, movement, then you can pick, let's say this point and select something like this one. And it's going to cut the two 
the, the two directions for uh, this key very sudden. Or you can go back to this one, and as soon as you move one, they are going to adjust to the other. Hold on, quick break before we jump back into the sequencer. Let's talk about your journey for a second. If you are here learning how to make a cinematic shot in Unreal, chances are you're serious about creating your own games or at least thinking about it. But here's the thing. Learning on your own can be overwhelming and six months can run without noticing that you haven't taken a step in the right direction without the transformation you needed. I know how that is because I've been there. You ask yourself where to start, what to focus on next, how do I get noticed? That's why I created the Game Creator Accelerator. It is not a course. It is a full mentorship program designed to help you build a career in the gaming industry with clarity, a structure, real guidance, and with me at your side. Visit Willen.com, register, and take your first steps. Let's talk about your challenges, where you want to go, and how to get there using a proven system that's already working even through difficult times in the industry. Stop spinning your wheels. Start building your dream. You could be doing what you love sooner than you think. Now, let's say that for this shot, I want to move the camera, but I also want to move one of these characters. Let's say I want to move this character as the camera is moving as well. Just as we did with the actor of the camera, you can add as many actors in your scene to be controlled on the sequencer. I'm going to close the section of the camera here. And because I selected also the actor, I have it on the outliner. And now I can drag and drop inside the sequencer. At this moment, I'm not planning to control animations, but I want to control the position of this character. Again, we're talking about the transform component. So let's say that in this position, I want the character to start. So click on the transform. Now let's move a bit on the sequence that we are creating. And now let's move my character to this position. Now I can add another transform. In fact, I also want to move my character and rotate it. Now, because I don't want to follow the sequence of the, uh, I don't want to have the perspective of the camera, I can remove the camera and work with my scene as I usually work. I'm going to add a rotation for this character as well. And now at this point. So if you can see now the character is rotating as it is moving. Now I want to move the character to this position. Let's say moving a little bit more in the sequence to this point. And now I'll drag my character to here. And again, add a new key. Finally, I want to move, let's say my character to here. Now I can drag it. Let me move to one side to have a better perspective. Drag it here. And also, I am going to rotate him, let's say here, add another key. And here we have the sequence, the entire sequence for my character. So look how it's moving until this position. If we go back to the perspective from the scene actor ca camera, and we see the entire sequence, let's play it. This is the final result. Let's go back for a second to the camera actor. Let's move it at the beginning. And look for the camera settings. In the camera settings, select a different size than this one. Let's select 69 DSLR. And the current focal length Let's set it on 40. Back to the perspective of the camera. Let me close the character and go back to the camera. And select here, Scene Camera. I want to focus on this character. To achieve it, go to the Focus Settings. Use this drop. 
and pick the object where you want to be focused. Let's say this character. Because we selected this actor, the focus will be at the distance of this actor. In this case, it's 632 centimeters. Now, let's say that I want to change the focus as well as we progress in our shot. Well, here you have the manual focus distance. So I can pick the focus distance here. Remember that you create a new circle to indicate that we're adding a key for the manual focus distance. And then as we move to, let's say, the end, I can also add another element of focus. Let's say I want to focus on this other character. Now I can add a key for the manual focus distance. And you can see that the manual focus distance is going to change as we progress on the shot. For the final step, imagine that you want to export your final shot for a video that you are creating, let's say for YouTube. Then, once you have your shot ready, click on this button to render this movie to a video. Be sure that you have the same frame rate that you set it. In our case, it was 24 frames, which is perfect. You can capture the video as a video sequence, or you can also define a group of images that you can paste one after another with the same frame per second. In my case, I can export it, let's say, to PNGs. Define the output directory. I will take the T sequencer, which is where I create the project, but I um, will add a new a new folder for the sequencers so let's say recordings select the folder and then capture movie save and give it some time to generate this entire sequence let's open the folder showing the explorer and look for the recordings. And here you have the sequence of the sequence of images that you can paste one after another. And the editor that you can use, well, I usually use Wondershare Filmora, but you can use any type of editor. What matters is that you set the frame per seconds to the same frame frame per seconds that you establish for your project. In our case, 24. But if you wish, you can also save it as AVI file. Let's see if we are in the same place. Perfect. Recordings and capture movie. Give it a second to the preview. And here is the AVI. And you can play your sequence. If this video added value to you, like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss tips and tutorials on Unreal Engine and how to build your successful career in video games. And be sure to check out the next video on the best way to learn game development. Until next time, keep creating, keep sharing, and most importantly, keep dreaming big. I'll see you soon, my fellow creators.